So the next year's version 13.2 has been released and there are some exciting new features along with that and one of the main features was the route handlers. So now we can define the API routes with the Next.js 13 app directory and this was a huge update from the Next.js team because now we can define the APIs as well with the Next.js 13 app router. So let's see that how we can define that. So I have just created the brand new Next.js application with the latest and there you will find now we won't be having the pages directory inside that. So inside this root folder now we won't be having the pages directory so we have the app directory and inside that we have the API folder and inside the API folder we have the hello and inside the hello we have the route.ts. So the pages has been officially removed from the next year's 13.2 and there we have the route.ts file which would automatically be considered as a route. So as we define a separate route inside the app router, so in the front end if we define a page.tsx then it would be considered as a route. So same would be considered inside the API as well. So inside the API if we will define a file name like the route.ts so it would be considered as a separate route and the name would be the parent folder like you have defined the route inside the hello so this would be considered as the localhost 3000 slash api slash hello and this file would be then called and inside this file now you can define the api handlers function like for each http verb request you need to define a separate function like here by default they have a function of the get so if you need to define the post function then you need to define the same function for the post as well so the method name would be post and same for the delete the update and the put as well so you can move on to the official documentation of the route handles to learn more about it so you can have the export async function get and there you can see the route handlers have an isomorphic api to support both edge and the node.js runtimes so the both edge and the node.js runtimes the v8 and the edge as well so now this is supported and there you can see now we have a route.ts file which can export an asynchronous function named by the HTTP verbs. Like the functions should be the get, the function name should be the get, the head, the options, the post, put, delete and the patch. So with that we have a major advantage. So earlier when we defined any file it would automatically be defined as a route. So there for each file we would only call one handler function to handle all of the incoming requests. But now with the next year's 13.2, now we can define the functions for each HTTP verb request like for the get head options. So now we do not need to check the type of the request, we just directly run the business logic. So now let's see that how we can define the API routes within the next year's 13. So for that you can head over to the beta documentation of the next year's 13 and there you can search for the route.js file. And there you can see with the route.js now you can define the handler functions. Like here you can see you can define a separate handler functions for a separate type of request like for the get, the head, the post, put and the delete functions and if you do not have the options then the next JS will automatically implement the options into your route file. And there in each request you have a parameter you have the first parameter of the request which is of the type of the request so you can get the parameters and this is optional so if you do not need to define the request then it will be still okay. And inside that you can see the guest request, the request object is a next request object which is an extension of the web request API. So in the web request API we have a lot of functions but this request is an extension of the web request API. So we can have some extended functions and features and it gives you a further control over the incoming request like getting the URL, like getting the cookies and like getting the path names as well. And then you can see inside the second parameter you have the context. And it works same like earlier we defined the get static props, get server side props. So inside that we had a parameter of the context and inside that we had a object of the params. So it works same like that we have the params and we can access their routes as well. Like if we have the dynamic routes then we can have the params.team to get the value of that. Like it works same like that. So we have the context and we'll be seeing all of that in action in just a minute. And then you can see we can define the slug routes as well, the dynamic routes as well. So it is a lot easier than the previous version of the Next.js 13 in which we would create a separate files for the get request for the post request. So now it is very easy and straightforward. And there you can see you can have the response as well. So you can send directly the response like the web response API but you can also use the next response as well to send some customized data according to you. So now we'll see all of that in action. So here we have the route.ts file inside the hello. So this file would be called from the localhost 3000 slash api slash hello and this file would be triggered and inside that we have a function of the get we can define the function for the post as well the put and the delete but if you will just open the server so you can open the server you can move ahead to the localhost port of the 3000 slash hello 
slash API slash hello and there you will see you will find the response that you are sending so you are sending the hello next yes so you are sending this response and you are getting the response there it is working totally fine and inside the second parameter you can send an options object and you can send the status as well status text as well so the status can be 200 like this so the response would be same that you are sending so that's how you can send a response with the get request and same would work for the post as well so you cannot send the post request from the browser because it sends the get request but if you want to send the post request then you can move on to the postman to send the request but before that you need to define that function like this is a get request so we can copy that we can define the post as well so we can have the export async function that can be the post to send the post type of request and inside that you can have the hello we can have it with post and if we save if we move on to the application if we just make a post request so you can define that route here localhost 3000 api hello and the type of request should be post so if we just click on the send then you will be seeing the message of the hello with post so here you can see here you have the message of the hello with post and everything seems to be working perfectly fine so now you can see now we are sending a static message inside only the string format but if you just use it the json then it would not support it so with the json you need to define a separate response for that so for sending the separate response you can remove this return you can use the next response api so we can have the next response and with that we can send the json message like this next response or json and with that we can send the json data as well so we can get the message key as well so we can get the message and with that we can have the hello from get like this so we can get this request so if we just move on if we just make a get request once again if we just click on the send then you can see now we'll be seeing json data along with that we have the message and with that we have the hello from get so everything seems to be working fine so now we can send the response like this as well inside the json as well with the static strings as well so now we have seen some routes with that and now let's see the dynamic routes that how we can define the dynamic routes so inside the api now i will create another folder that can be the block and inside this block now you need to define a dynamic route so for the dynamic route you need to use the same method like we use inside the app directory in the front end as well so you need to create a separate folder and the folder name should be inside the square brackets like we can have the id of the block like this so we can have the id and inside the id for handling the incoming request now we need to define a file that can be the route.ts and now inside the route.ts now you can see now the path is the app api block the id and the route.ts and now we can define these functions like this so we can have these functions so the next response is there and then you can see inside that now we have the hello from get and now we can move on and make this request so for making this request we can move on into the api we have the block instead of that so we can have the block and after the block we can define any dynamic id that we want like the dynamic id can be one if we just make a get request once again so here you can see now we'll be seeing the message like the hello from get so we are getting this message so we can have the block as well so we can have the hello from blog if we just click on the send then you can see now we are getting the message of the hello from blog because now this is a dynamic route so what it is doing so we have the api block and then we have the dynamic folder and inside that we have the route.ts in which we can make the request and if you want the actual id as well like if you want to fetch some data from the database from this id so how can you do that so inside the second parameter you get the context like as we saw earlier so inside the context you have the key of the params as well so you have the params so we can just move on and we can run the context like this and we can give the type as the id and inside that we can move on we can just log the data we can have the context we can have the params and if we just log that if we just save if we just move on once again and then you can see if we just make a request once again into this into the local o3000 api blog one and there you can see inside that inside the console window we'll be getting the id that we are sending so here we are sending the id one and here inside this inside this response inside the log window we are getting the id as well and there if you define any id like the 100 after that then you can see if you just click on the send then you will be getting the id as the 100 so it is working perfectly fine so you can see so that's how we can define the dynamic routes and how can we get the data of the dynamic value and after this dynamic route now we can see that how we can define the slug routes as well so you can see slug route is a route like this so we can have the slug so we can have anything after this so we can have the app block we can have anything after that so that would be considered as a slug so if we just move on into the api so with the api folder we can define a new folder inside the api so the folder name should be starting from the square brackets again but there we need to define three dots and then we need to define the identifier like we can have the slug like this so we can have the slug and there this would be the folder name 
and inside that we can define a new file that can be the route.ts and inside that again we can define the handler functions like this we can define this handler function we can copy all of that we can paste and we can have the handler from slug so then you can see this would be considered as a slug route so now we do not need the context as well so we can remove the context and there you can see now we have a folder of the three dots and the slug and there we have a file of the route.ts so now if you want to make the request to the slug route then you can see we have the local host port of the 3000 api block 1000 so after this then we can have anything after that like we can have id once again like the one two three or we can have the any after that then you can see if we define any route after the local 3000 api which is not registered inside this folder then this route would be called so any route which is not registered inside the api so this slug route would be called if we have so many parameters inside the request so if we just make this request like the api block thousand denny or anything after that then you can see if we just click on the send then we'll be seeing the message that hello from this slug route because now it's a slug route and this is most commonly used if you are creating a block like application and there you can see we do not need to write block or anything after that so we can remove the block we can use one two three any and again one two three as well so we can just send then slug route would be called because the slug means that we do not know the value of what are the parameters of that route but how can we get the values of the slug route so here we have the async function get and i think this should be the request only not the request cache so this should be the request and now how can we get the value of the slug so we have the one two three four one two three four or we can have as many parameters as we want but how we can get the value of the slug so for that you need to move on into this so as we discussed earlier like we have the request which is an extension of the web request api which is available inside the next request so you can move on you can give it the type of the next request as well like you can have the next request so you need to import that and inside that you can just lock the value as well so you can lock the value of the request dot you can have the url you can have the next url which is available inside the next request so the next url and then you can just get the path name so you will get the full path name with that so if you will just move on if you will make a request once again if you will just click on the send then you can see hello from slug but inside that you will be seeing the path name as well like we have the api 123 1234 so we have the same route like this so you can get the values from the path name like this so that's how we define the slug urls and that's how we can just get their values like this and now let's see that how we can get the query parameters from the request as well so suppose we can close all of that and if we just move on into the hello so if we just make a request from the hello like api slash hello but along with the request then we can send some query parameters like the query parameters like we can have the question mark and if you want to send some data like we can have the sort of like we can have the sort and the sort should be equals to the asc like the ascending order so like you can see if we just click on the send then the hello from get would be performed like we have the defined like we have defined the function of the message we have the hello from get so this function would be performed but how we can get the value of the sort equals to the ASC, which is the sort is the ascending, how we can just get the query params value. So for that, again, inside the request object, we have something. So we can just log the query params as well. So we can have the request dot, we can have the next URL. So I think it won't be available inside this. So we need to use the next request like this. So we can have the next request. And inside that, we can have the request dot next URL. And inside the next url you can just have the search params so we can have the search panel and this is a type of set then you can get the value as well so you can get the get of the value then that should be the sort like we have defined the value of the sort like this so if we accept a search params of the sort then we can just get the value as well like the search params dot get of the value of the sort if we just make a request once again if we just click on the send then you can see now we'll be seeing the value of the search params as well that we define so we are accepting the search value of the sort then we are getting the value like the asc we can send the descending as well like we can send the desc and there you can see if we just click on the send now we'll be getting the descending as well so you can see that's how we can just get all of their values from the query params as well so you can see it is working totally fine now we can define the post request as well the get request as well so this is how we can define the apis with the next year 13.2 inside the app directory and that's working totally fine but now let's see that how we can make the request from the front end like if we move on into the page.tsx if we just remove everything from there if we just remove this main div if we just render our own div inside that and now if you want to make the request so for that you need to use the client feature because now it is not available inside this so you need to use the use client like this so we can have the use client and then you can just move on and you can define that here 
so you can have a use effect over here like this so we can have the effect and inside that you can just render this only one single time and inside that you can just have the fetch request so you can have the fetch we can have the http we can have the local host so we can have this fetch request and then we can just use a then statement as well so we'll be getting the then we'll be getting the response then we can just convert the response to the json like this so we'll be having the json and then after that we'll be getting the data then we can use it then once again so we'll be getting the data and then we can just log that data as well inside the console window so we can have the console.log the actual data that we are getting so we can send this request and then we can just render the hello as well like this so we can send the hello inside this page so if we just move on into this if we can have slash nothing after that then you can see we are seeing the hello and we can move on into the inspect panel into the console then you can see here we are seeing the object and there we can see we have the message we have the hello from get so that's how we can just make some request as well from the front end part of the next year's 13. so this is all about defining the apis with the next year's 13.2 that how we can define the apis with the next year's 13 app directory how we can define the dynamic routes how we can define the slug routes how we can define the query params and how we can make some requests like the get post and the delete and how we can make the request from the front end of the next year's 13. so this is all about the api request inside the next year's 13. So that's it for this video.